What's up, guys? It's episode 380. Welcome back to the show. I don't smoke up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever smoke up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Man, I hate this country sometimes, bro. I can't fucking stay. Red, white, and blue, motherfucker. These colors don't run, bitch. You well, we have the it. most medals. We don't have the most gold medals. And I don't like that China is winning. Um, we do have a total of 19 days of the Olympics. I'll let you do the math there, how many days left we have, but we need to get to it. Um, we did just win. The women's gymnastics just won uh, last night. Congratulations to the, I think they're called the Golden Girls. They're calling themselves this year. So um, I love the gymnastics. Anyways... Hi, welcome back to the show. <laughs> I have a good one for you. We're going to talk about the Olympics. We're going to talk about this ballerina farm article. We're going to talk about wedding planning and where I'm at with that because we're now 52 days away from my wedding. Um, we've got some politics. Nah, we're not going to. I mean, we might talk about Kamala today. We might talk about a little golf. Um, honestly, oh, and we're going to talk about Steven speaking of speaking of the Olympics. We're going to talk about Steven, um, this wonderful, amazing, super, so talented pommel horse King representing the United States. And I just have a lot to say about him because it has been a real joy watching Steven ride that pommel horse. Um, but yeah, let's like get into it. So like I said, last week. We're in the thick of summer. We're in the thick of it. It's July 31st. Happy last week of July. Uh, and to be honest, I'm starting to get that little itch, that little bug for f the fall and football season. And yeah, that kind of atmosphere, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Anyways, so I'm kind of getting that like, oh, it's so hot. I'm kind of getting over it. Uh, today we do have the air conditioning on. So if there's a little hum in the background, that's what you're hearing. So yeah. Um, what did I do today? What are my beverages on the table? What am I wearing? Let's set the scene. Um, I'm officially saying no to, it's been difficult, but I'm officially back on my, you guys, it's so funny how I'm, I'm like the opposite of, of what I used to be in the gym where I hated lifting and I only wanted to do cardio because all I cared about was being as small as possible. Like my goal was literally, literally like how, like I, I want to evaporate my body and I want it to be as yeah as small as possible. But now it's the opposite where I'm obsessed with lifting weights and it's, I hate cardio. And now I'm, because I'm like trying to, you know, shred, shred for the wet. I am embracing diet culture. I'm embracing toxic di diet culture. I'm embracing the pressure that is put on brides to literally look like a, speaking of ballerina farm, a ballerina, a perfect little princess ballerina with no imperfections on her wedding day. I'm embracing that. It's a short lived time. I've got 52 days and I'm, yeah, now I'm having to up the cardio because I don't know. It's just one of those things where I know I need, I need to like switch it up and stay off. I'm literally lifting. Like, why am I deadlifting like 200 pounds? You know what I mean? Like I've, I, it's bitch, your wedding's in 52 days, put the weights down, get on the Stairmaster, get on that elliptical. <laughs> Actually, I hate the elliptical. I don't do it. Um, I've been running, I've been continuing the Pilates and yoga, but <sighs> it's tough. It's so hard for me to not, I, I'm going to keep my lifting to two days a week two days, maybe one heavy glute day and, that, and that's it instead of six heavy glute days. So, um, yeah, wait, I worked out this morning. We've got a diet Coke or excuse me, a, a Dr. Pepper zero, a Waterloo tropical fruit, sparkling water. And this was a iced coffee protein shake. Um, yeah, that's what's happening. Oh my God. Okay. Did I talk about wedding planning? We're going to talk about that obviously. Um, but yeah, first let's talk about the Olympics because I've been watching them. It's been four years, obviously, since the last summer Olympics. And 
wait a minute. Hold on. It's every two years. Wait, it's every four years. But it's every two years we get the Olympics because it's winter, summer, winter, summer. Okay. So I didn't pay attention at all. I don't even know where the last Olympics was. <laughs> was it in like Greece? I don't know. Whatever. So I haven't paid attention. Literally the only athlete's name I know is Simone Biles. I did just watch her documentary, which was amazing. I think she's the most like, like her personality is so great and so fun and she's so positive and I love her big smile. And, um, I've been really liking these sports documentaries. Oh my God. We also watched the receiver documentary, the football one. That one was so well done. So I think that, that that's why I was getting the itch for football season. I was like, oof, this is like getting me excited. So, um, yeah, I haven't been, pay I haven't paid attention, to, attention to the Olympics literally probably, probably in the last, I don't know, the last like two summer Olympics, maybe whatever. So every night we've been laying down on the couch. I like that they're broadcasting it at like, you know, 6, 7 p.m. Um, obviously, because it's so far ahead in France. Um, and yeah, we've, we've been eating dinner and watching the Olympics. And so far I've watched gymnastics, swimming, ping pong. By the way, that is so entertaining. Like the ping pong, I think, do you guys hear Louis snoring? Oh my God. It's so loud. <laughs> I have an audience of one today, actually audience of two. I don't know where Jimmy is, but, um, he's taken his morning nap. Yeah. I've been ping pong is so entertaining and so unreal how good they are at it. And I just love how they like literally like they like lick their paddle or they like get so cute with it, like so close to their face. And they're like caressing the paddle and the ball. And they're just like hunched over and then they just like slice that shit and cut the ball. So it like, I don't know, like spins a certain way so that when it hits the other side of the table, it like ricochets the opposite direction of what the other people think it's going to go. I don't know. It's amazing. And last night I watched, was it Korea? Was it? No. Was it Korea and uh, China? China was nasty. They won. And that poor kid, I don't know how old they are, by the way, like those Chinese ping pong players could either be 26 or 16. Like, I think they're younger. I think they're in their, I think they're in their teens, but <laughs> the one kid looks so nervous. I don't know. He's like holding the Chinese flag and they're getting their pictures taken. And it just looked like he's like, where's my mom? Like, like, I, I don't want to be here right now. Like no expression, no smile, like nothing. I'm like, you just won gold. Like, are like, come on like put your arm in the air, celebrate something, anything. Nope. I don't even think it was a half smile that we got out of him. So I don't think the, the girl smiled either, but they were so, t they were fucking amazing. I could literally watch ping pong. It's kind of one of those things as a spectator. That's like, um, it's so what's the word like satisfying or it's like, you can't like look away. You're just like so locked in. Cause it's crazy how they're moving when they, volley it back and forth for like, like there's this one, is it called volleying, volleying back and forth where it just like goes forever where I'm like, this isn't there. This is like robots. Like I, I was so, I was like, holy shit. So yeah, I've watched ping pong. I also watched this other sport. It was a women's, I don't know. I don't think it's called handball. That's what my brain told me, but I think it's like, it's like a hybrid between basketball soccer or no basketball dodgeball and there's like a soccer net they don't really dribble the ball there's like one dribble I think they only can they, if they take two steps because they like travel with it like they hold the ball and run but they take like I think after two steps they have to dribble it and I think they only get one dribble it was crazy so I watched whatever that sport was um swimming oh track I didn't really see much yet um I heard about Coco Goff. She isn't advancing to the next round or whatever of tennis. Didn't watch that. I'm like missing a major sport. Gymnastics. Oh, I watched. Oh my God. The men's gymnastics, of course, with Steven. Come on. Such a highlight. Um, so I, I, I brought up Steven's. If you don't know who Steven is, Steven Neto, Netero, Stick, Sick, Netero. Okay. Let's see. How do I say this? Pronounced. 
I'm not even going to try. Netero. Stephen John Netero shit. Netero sick. I think that's. Is that Swedish or is that. Polish or it's it's one of those last names with a S C I K to it. Sick. I think it's just sick. S I K. Netero sick. Nador Nador sick. He's an American uh, gymnast who specializes in the pommel horse. So he literally sits, sits around. If you didn't know this, if you haven't been watching the Olympics, um, which I'm actually amazed by the way that I'm even watching it this year. Cause typically it's like, Oh, I know what's going on, but I'm not actively like sitting down every night watching it. I'm watching like a Netflix series or, you know, anything else. Like I really haven't cared about the Olympics since Beijing, Beijing, which by the way was the best. I'll go on record. I'll go on record and say that that was the best opening ceremony in my lifetime. I, I don't know if you guys remember it, but they did it in that. They built this like nest, like the stadium, I guess was supposed to represent like a bird's nest. Um, and it was just the most out of this world performance by these Chinese performer. I don't even know what they were like popping out of these. Like, do you guys remember this? They had like a wave going on where these people were like, in these boxes and it was just I don't even go look it up on YouTube like if you want to rewatch it that was the best opening ceremony and that's the last Olympics I have a fond memory of because I'm pretty sure that was like Michael Phelps Sean Johnson gymnast era Sean White era I know that's winter but like that's when I actually remembered the athletes and like who they were and I was following it because that was the time where it was like you and your, well, I was younger. So it was like me and the fam watching TV together, watching the Olympics where I don't know, whatever, that was a good time. And this Olympic ceremony opening ceremony was not the vibe, not the vibe. I like that they were trying to incorporate the city of Paris because it's so iconic and oh my God, like let's use, let's use the city. Let's go down the Sven, the, the Sven, the S is it the Sven river and do the boats and do the athletes on the boats, 85 boats. I don't know how fucking long that took, but I didn't watch the whole thing. All I know is it was kind of slow, kind of boring, kind of, I know there was a lot of like controversial stuff. Like someone's balls were hanging out on screen at one point. Um, there's this like depiction of the, that Da Vinci picture of the last supper. And they were, I don't know, there was like drag Queens. I don't know what was going on with that. There's some sort of thing. I didn't see that part. I did like, I remember Corey and I were watching it. And we we're like, mm, this is kind of a, a vibe. It was like heavy metal and opera at the same time. I thought that was cool. I really liked the Assassin's Creed character looking guy that was doing the parkour on the rooftops with the torch. Really like that. Um, honestly, Lady Gaga was cute. I just love her. So like anything she does, I think is great. I don't think her performance was like, I mean, she's no Tate McRae. That's my that's the new bar for me. Like as far as dancing and performing goes like Tate McRae is, I just, she's on my algorithm, like all of her concert videos and all of her dancing videos. So like anyone who's like dancing on a stage now, I'm, I'm, I'm comparing to her and I know she's like, she's trained to like dance like that. And it's like, she was a dancer first and then a singer. And then now she's both and she's touring and she's amazing. And I could talk, I could do an entire podcast about how much I love Tate McRae. But Lady Gaga was cute. I love the little like pink pom pommy twirly things her dancers had. And um I heard that I heard that that was actually pre-recorded. I know there was there's a bunch of pre-recorded stuff, I'm sure. Um I didn't sit st stick around for Celine Dion, but I know that was a heavy thing or like a really moving thing for not only her, but a lot of people because of her um condition she has with I forget the name of it, but she in her documentary talked about this issue she has with her body. I don't know if it like freezes up or shakes or something like that. I'm being, I hope that doesn't sound like I'm being ignorant and insensitive, but I know that she's been struggling with her health. So it was like a big moment for her to sing during the opening ceremony, especially under like inside of the Eiffel tower. I thought that was really cool, but let's go back to Steven. All right, this, okay. First of all, if I was in the Olympics, I would make it my mission to become a meme if, okay. It helps that Steven's really good at the pommel horse. Like he's the pommel horse, pommel horse, official King of the pommel horse, pommel horse. Um, but so, so that helps, but like if, even if I, okay, whether I was like the greatest at my sport or just like 
an average athlete who's like, hold, you know, part of the t- team that's keeping it together. I would do, I would make it my mission to become a meme, to be, to stand out in some way, because it's like a lot of these sports aren't very well known. Like nobody, like you never watched. I feel like the only time we watch gymnastics is, is, is if it's at the Olympics. Right. So, um, anyways, I just feel like he's really, I mean, he's just being himself. That's a, that's the best part. Steven's just being himself, but there is something special about the fact that, you know, he does, he does wear the glasses and he kind of has like this little nerd vibe to him and he's, um, just really, I loved when he won or, or when they, cause they won, I think the men's gymnastics won for the first time and like they won a medal for the first time in, I don't know, was it 19 years? Maybe not that long. So again, I don't, I'm not like super, I don't follow the Olympics that closely, but I just love that. Uh, he's so, he was so fucking happy and I, the, I don't know. He's so great to watch. I just love his mannerisms. I love how he just sits around like one of his uh, teammates killed it and he's just sitting back like doesn't even get up to like I know he was like focusing because he was next, but he's cool. I like Steven and uh, I guess here we go. This is his backstory because I was like, where does he come from? Who is he? So he was born in Massachusetts, 1998. Okay. He began gymnastics in 2003 and competed in all of the events, not just the pommel horse. Um, around the time he was in high school, he noticed that he was only progressing on the pommel horse and decided to specialize in that event. Okay. In 2015 and 2016, he won the junior Olympic national title on the pommel horse. He is well known for competing in goggles. Oh, which were originally a secret Santa gift for him from a Penn state teammate. That's cute. He used to wear goggles. He should have had those goggles on during the, his event. He took them off and it was like, oh God, I hope he can like, I mean, those are some thick ass glasses. I mean, um, so he began competing for Penn state in 2017, became the NCAA champ, national champion on the pommel horse during his freshman season. Yeah. He's born to do this like this. Yeah. Um, cool. He does have a girlfriend. I saw blah, blah, blah. Is, was this his first Olympics? I think it was. Um, so here's his titles, his competitive history. Yeah. Olympic games. So Olympic, uh, did he try go to the trials before? Hold on. Okay. He went to the Olympic trials in 2021 world team trials, world championships. He's got a lot of medals. Simone Biles. I mean, like, I know she has the most, but I was looking on the screen last night under her name, like when I was watching it and it's literally like, isn't it like 30 or no, is it 23? It's something crazy. I'm like, that is so many fucking medals. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm going to play this because I just love this. This was all of us when Steven was about to do the pommel horse. This was all of us. Let me play it. It's so great. Hold on. Do, do, do. Dead air. Here we go. 15.5 million views. Come on, Steven. Come on, Steven. Yes. Let's go, Steven. You can tell, like, he's got it. Like, he's so calm. He's so calm. Mm -hmm. It's giving Spider-Man, isn't it? It is. It's giving Spider-Man. It is. Come on, Steven. On Come on, Steven. Take it home, Steve. As a member of the glasses community, yes. I support Steven. That's right. I can't see either, Steven. That's right. Well, it's a whole different situation. But that's why I'm cheering him on. Come on, Steven. Look at the team. Exactly. Come on, Steve. Come on, Steve. Oh my gosh. Glasses are off. Oh my god. Face is on. I'm nervous. No, he's got it. Come on, Steven. Why are you nervous? Look at that face. Look, he's got it. Okay. That's right. Get up on there, Steven. Get up on there, Steven. The pummel. <laughs> Look at that horse. Look at that horse. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh my god. Let's go, Steven. Let's go. Let's go. Come 
more. He's doing the spins right now. On the, he's like, you better spin. You better spin and keep you spinning, Stephen. <laughs> oh, the way I be dizzy. Dude. Look how he did. Look, get back on there, Stephen. Look how he's moving. If you guys haven't oh, seen this, like, you need to watch this. Like, Stephen, I mean, not this Come TikTok. On, but. Oh, oh, oh. You better go, Steven. You better go, Steven. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. That I mean, I just love it. Um, yeah, if you haven't, if you haven't even seen, if you don't even know who Steven is, if you haven't watched the Olympics or seen like if I didn't tell you or if okay, if I say okay, I've been saying pommel horse, pommel horse. I feel like until I saw it during obviously the last few days of me watching the gymnastics. If I heard someone say pommel horse, I would be like, huh? Like I, I haven't, I, I wouldn't picture like what it is. I would need it. To, I would need it to be described. So it's like that fat <laughs> balance, balance beam with the handles that they twirl around. I mean, that shit looks so hard. You have to have the most insane, like they all have amazing core strength, but like just to, I don't know, just spin like that on the one arm. He did it twice. Like, come on. So favorite Olympian right now for me in, in my heart is Steven Nedoros sick Nedoros 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 sick Nedoros sick Nidro sick I wonder if it's like Nidro Nidoro sick you know f fuck me right like <laughs> figure it out before you record the episode um what else is going on with the Olympics uh yeah, I don't know. I'm enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun. You guys like, you know, it's crazy. I might just play this video because it popped up on my, uh, the typical liberal account, like the video, like when I open my Instagram, there's this new video, like the whole like Trump situation, the Trump attempted assassination situation is like, it's, it, it's like here today, gone tomorrow. Like, no, I feel like it's like, an, it's an old news story now and nobody, it's like, does anyone still care? Is anyone still like, are we ever going to like figure anything out with this? Because I've heard some crazy shit about, I mean, it's like stuff you hear, right? That there was this mysterious figure coming to and from that Thomas Crook's house before the assassination attempt. And he was going back to a building in DC near the FB I'm like this is like false like <laughs> don't listen to me I don't know anything but like I'm re regurgitating something I heard this like guy was going back and forth to, to a building in DC from to and from Thomas Crook's house like what the hell is that you know um but now there's this new video um where you can see from a different angle I'll play it I mean you can't I'll just describe it as I watch it um you can see Thomas Crook's coming on the building from like you see Trump and you can see him in the background crawling like or walking around. It's insane. Um, yeah, I just feel like so we're going to find stuff out eventually. But right now it seems like it's rah, rah, Kamala's going to be the new nominee for the Democratic Party. And it's like all the news wants to talk about now. And it's like, well, what about this shit? You know, <laughs> this crazy event. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, It's kind of all a blur because it's like obviously – the election still has to go on, you know, they still need to keep things moving, but it's like, how do you cover both? And how do you, I don't know, like what <sighs> this Cheadle lady, what's her name? Kim Cheadle stepped down the, F, um, director of the secret service. So, um, but yeah, here we go. Let me play this. Cause it's crazy. Come on, Steven. I love that woman whoever recorded that i didn't catch her tiktok but okay it says wild new video oh shit this is loud sorry it says wild new video obtained by fox news shows the assassination attempt from the victim's pov as the shooter is visible crawling on the rooftop where he would ultimately take his shots yeah he's literally so uh, the angle is like from trump's back and you can see into the crowd and you see the building. Like that's the difference now. Like all these videos before were just like bystanders on the side of the building that saw saw him like crawling up, like army crawling up. This video shows like he's walking behind the building. Okay. And then he pops up. 
now he's, I think, starting to... Eventually, he crawls over. I'm still not over it, but like I said in... The, I think it was last week's episode or the one before that when this all happened. I'm kind of not even surprised that... Uh, I mentioned how when it happened, I was like, holy shit, Trump just got shot and what that Like, it was such a shock. To, it was like, whoa, you know? But also, I... I noticed that because I'm inundated with so much information and bad news and crazy shit on my phone 24 seven, like it's always in my face. It kind of desensitized it for me a little bit. And I, I feel like now that time has passed and things are moving on in the news cycle, I'm like, I'm, I'm just not surprised by any, any of this as big of a deal as it was. It's like, this is just the nature of how the world works now and how information moves and the news cycle moves it's like rah rah Kamala rah rah the Olympics it's like yeah but just like we're just coming to I'm still like that was so huge and I I just can't believe it like I'm still like what the fuck you know um but what's crazy about Kamala is like I swear the tone it's crazy right like everyone I'm sorry from both sides I've only heard negative things about Kamala ever Th over the last four years since she's been the VP. Like I've never heard anyone super complimentary. Like she's amazing. She's this great politician. She's blah, blah. like, no one's ever been like, she's great. And now I feel like the same people that were like, this bitch is crazy. She's <laughs> what is she saying? Like whenever she gets on the mic, it's like, you know, it's always clipped. Cause it's like, it's, she's being like, her word salads or her, you know, sound bites are different than Biden, obviously, because his are just like they end up being mumbles. But hers are just as like, what the fuck? Because she it doesn't make sense. And it's like, what was this coconut tree thing she said? Or um, <laughs> what's this phrase that's going around? It's like what will be is and what can't be is why it's like literally that kind of shit. But my point is it's like people are like rah, rah, Kamala. Like what? How are we happy about how's anyone from both sides? I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, Trump supporter, Biden supporter, whatever. I'm like, how is anyone like hardcore? Like, yeah, fuck yeah. Kamala. Well, oh my God. First female president. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Like I, I just, I'm in, sh I'm not, again, I'm like, nothing shocks me anymore. I'm like, it, are these people like, hello, knock, knock, anyone home? Does your brain work? Oh, this will be a good positive step for America. I, I love when I like read the comments from people in like the UK on the BBC um, social media or like when they, I, I follow a lot of news accounts and when people from other countries comment on it, it's like, this will be a positive forward step for America. I'm like fucking Russia. And what was it? China just had, uh, in Alaska. I don't, I didn't read this in detail, but pretty sure they just flew bomber planes on our fucking land, like across, oh, across Alaska or something. Um, that's fucking scary. So, <sighs> and I hate when people say, I don't need my president to be an asshole. I don't need my president to be like an aggressive alpha male <clears throat> leader. I'm like, huh? I don't, it's not like he needs to be an asshole, but it's just like, <sighs> it definitely sets the tone and it, it's all about perception. Right. And it's all about optics and it's a lot of like puffing your chest in politics and a lot of like, you know, showing muscle because yeah, I've never felt like this is the first time and it's official now. Like, I think I've noticed this now, obviously, for the last like four years, but it's like officially setting in or it's setting into my brain that we're not this like strong. We, I want to say we are like, yeah, we're this strong, powerful country. We're like number one in the world. Woo, you know, go USA, USA. You know, we're like, I love this country and everything, but I, it feels it's I feel like it's we're super fucking vulnerable right now. Like I sense this like icky, I don't feel as safe as I used to in this country. I didn't feel as confident 
in our country as I used to like. So, um, yeah, she picked her VP, I think, or there's like five people that are potential candidates. Um, I think she picked the Senator from Arizona. Do you guys remember that? So this is a uh, Mark Kelly, the Arizona Senator. Uh, but, uh, do you guys remember when Gabby, Gabby Giffords literally got shot in the face? This was in 2011. Um, that was insane. I, I'll never forget that. She, I think she was at like some sort of like political rally thing or just out at a booth talking to people or something. And someone literally clocked her in the face. So her husband I think is who Kamala picked as the v- VP. If she, I think it's like, is she the nominee for the Democratic Party? Kamala Harris will begin a U.S. tour with her new running mate next week, inclu- indicating that she may unveil her choice by Monday. I think she did. This might be an old article. Oh, huh, this is two hours ago. Never mind. Um, the pool of candidates for Democratic vice president has been narrowed to a group of five, according to CBS and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, there's like governors, senators, um, all men, Tim Waltz, Pete Buttigieg. Um, <laughs> yeah, shit show. So anyways, um, guess who I'm voting for? I don't know. It's one of those things. It's just like... You either rock with Trump or you don't, I guess, but I don't give a fuck if I say it out loud that he's got my vote. I mean, the dude just got shot in the fucking head. I remember thinking like during his presidency a lot, I thought about it a lot. I was like, oh, if he's given a speech, like I always thought like he's going to get shot someday. He's going to, someone's going to try to kill him and look it happened you know so anyways do you guys want me do want (laughs) hi episode 380 still getting tongue-tied um I do have a lot of wedding planning updates and fun exciting things to share with the girlies so I do want to talk about kind of where I'm at with that but this ballerina farms article ballerina farm article came out from the times of London, not the New York times pulled it up here. I haven't read it yet, but I'm just like, you know, sitting back. I'm I've sat, I've been sitting back. I've, I've been sitting back. I've been just listening to people's thoughts and ideas about the whole thing about, you know, is she being, like mistreated by her husband and is she being trapped and the whole gist of it was she was going to be this she went to Juilliard or she was this amazing ballerina and then she met this guy and had eight kids with him and then her ballerina dreams never came to fruition everyone's like you know he took that from you and blah blah blah. I'm like "I'll, I'll just keep this short I feel like how old was she she's probably young she has eight kids now. I don't, I don't even think she's 35. I don't know. She seems like she's still in her early thirties. Um, you make choices in life. She made a choice. I I mean, sure. Maybe she was young and impressionable and met this guy and he sold her the idea of like, let's have a farm and let's have a lot of kids and be my wife and collect the eggs and milk the cows for me and bake my bread and At the end of the day, you know, just because she didn't become a ballerina, it's like everyone has, it's like, it's down, she made those choices for herself. And I I get the sense just watching her content because I do follow her and I love watching her cooking videos. I get the sense that, yeah, this is a lot. You have eight kids and you're baking everything from scratch. And, but she seems to be, in on the gig and like, like she seems like she 
wants to do this or if not it's like she's sacrificing all of this for so her kids could grow up this way and she can live this lifestyle I don't I don't know it's very interesting and um her husband does give out kind of asshole vibes to be honest like a little bit um so I will say that I don't I don't know it's really interesting people are very um I don't know. I think social media does, it doesn't paint the whole picture. Right. And so it's easy to assume things just based on what you see that she posts and what this article says, but this article article is a shit show. Um, I didn't read it, but from what other people are saying, like, um, yeah, they, I mean, these pictures are fucking beautiful. They took her milking the cows and I, I honestly, a piece of me wants this life kind of again. I, I didn't full on like home, like we didn't have cows that we were milking by hand. And it's not like my mom was baking everything from scratch, like for every single fucking meal. But I grew up, I grew up like this, you know, I did have the animals and the farm life and the simple shit and the open spaces and the fields and the, you know, it's great. It's very Zen. It's very therapeutic. Um, very good for the soul. I feel like she gets out a lot. She's got her own brand or she like sells shit. She's got, she's got a lot going on. She's got her great social media. It's it's like content, right? Like it's a lane. And she's like, there's probably a lot of stuff we don't see that isn't super like home study home. I, I, I don't know. She's like still doing pageants and, but that egg apron video really took people back. They're like, Oh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it was it was her birthday and she's opening this box that her husband gave her, the husband, and the kids, I guess. And she's like, Ooh, I hope it's tickets to Greece. Cause I guess she wants to go to Greece and travel. Cause she, I don't know. It's people are assuming like she never travels. She never goes anywhere. She's just like in on her little farm and then like goes to the grocery store with all of her eight kids <laughs> with no help. It's like, that's always the thing people point out. And it's just like her little life. And then she does a pageant here and there. Sure. And she like goes to community things. But anyway, she's opening this box. She's saying, Oh, I hope it's tickets to Greece. And then as she's opening it, she fills this fabric and she notices it's fabric. And she's like, Ooh, a hat I can wear in a hat I can wear in Greece. And then she's like pulling it out and then she goes, oh, an apron. Oh, my egg apron. And it's got these little like, it's like a kind of look like crocheted or something. It was cool. Um, like super handmade. It had these like little slots, like two rows or two or three rows where you can like collect eggs and put each one in, which I thought was super cool. Like if back in the day when I collected eggs, like that would have been a fun thing to have. But, you know, clearly it wasn't tickets to Greece. There's a little bit of like you could read it excuse me, disappointment on her face. I don't know. That's what people are saying. And I, I kind of noticed that. And then hit her husband's like, you're welcome, you know? <laughs> so it was weird, you know? And and it, I think who the fuck knows? Maybe they do f travel. Maybe they do go, go to Greece. Maybe they do. And we're just not seeing any of it. And they're keeping this narrative that, that they're, you know, this, full on homesteading farming household and everything they do is on the, it's like, I don't know, but, I, but they're not gonna, the thing about the internet, the thing about profiles like this, it's like, you can't win, you know, especially in her case, like, <sighs> yeah. So again, with what I said about making choices, for your life as a woman like yeah she had this talent and this dream of being a ballerina clearly she was that was the path she was on and then she meets this guy and then she makes a choice to go off with him and people are making it like she didn't have a choice like she didn't want to do any of this I love how people just like put that on they're they're like assuming so many things about her life and her what she wanted and it's like sure she could have had this beautiful career as a ballerina but that would have meant that she never would have had these beautiful kids and this farm life that looks beautiful that she seems to enjoy like from my perspective like I don't feel like she's miserable like 
you wouldn't get yourself into that if you didn't want to do it, I feel like. And I did say maybe it is a sacrifice. I don't know. So you can have like you can have it all like you can have like think about the dreams you've had for yourself in your life. You know, maybe if you're in your later 20s now or 30s or beyond 40s, 50s, like it's very normal and it's very like, yeah, realistic or whatever to realize that, oh, this this isn't going to work out for me or you know what? Yeah, maybe I have this amazing talent and maybe, yeah, but, but I'd actually, I, I, I want to do this instead. Maybe she started dreaming about the farm and maybe she met this man and, and maybe that lifestyle was, it, oh my God, this would be amazing, honey. I, let's do this thing. Let's have all these kids. I don't know. We don't know that. So, and again, I didn't read the article. Maybe she d- details that in the article. So again, this is just what I'm saying from my own t- like perspective on the whole thing from a distance, but, um, that's just how I see it. Like, I I think for me, I can, I, if I have to like, what did I say? I said, I'll make this short and sweet. Clearly (laughs) can't do that. Um, hi, I'm a podcast host and this is what I do. And I talk, we, I seriously, how am I ever going to make this episode, these episodes an hour? I don't know. Um, it would be like, I meet Corey. He knows that I've at that point when I met him, I had, I think over 350 podcast episodes, maybe under my belt. And I was like, I want to be a podcast host. Like this is my dream. It would be like, he knows that. And then does everything in his power to make sure that I don't pursue that. And I don't, I don't know. Cause here's something too. This is something that's very real. But instead he did it right. He supported me. He wanted me to pursue my dream of doing this and I am doing it and it's all well and good. And I'm not having any like, Ooh, I'm being, I can't pursue this because I met this man and he's changing the course of whatever the fuck. But here's the reality as a woman, especially when you're young and you meet a man, like if you don't have a strong sense of identity, if you don't have, yeah, really deep relationship with yourself where you're like, this is what I want out of my life. This is my dream. And I'm going to be unwavering in my pursuit of it. Meaning I don't care if I meet a man or if I don't meet a man, I'm going to do this thing because this is what will make my soul happy. And this is what I need to do. And this means everything to me. Like if you don't have that, and I think this is very true, especially for young women, early twenties, for sure. When your frontal lobe isn't even (laughs) fully developed or whatever, like you're going to, it's going to be easier for you to sway and to get molded and to change in the wind, especially when you meet a man who's got a dream that he has himself that he wraps you into. And it's like, you're going to be another tool in his toolbox. And you're going to be this, like in her case, like you're going to be this amazing asset to my wife. Cause you're going to mother my birth and mother, my children and take care of them for me because that's basically, I mean, I don't know what his involvement is, but it looks like she's like doing the majority of the taking care of the kids and all that while he's out, I guess, farming. I don't know what he does all day. Does he have another thing going on? I think maybe, I don't know. I don't know in super good detail. Um, so it's not like when she met him, she was like, I'm going to be this ballerina. I'm going to pursue my dream no matter what. And like, what's his name? Neilman's the Neilman's fuck. I don't know his name. Chad fucking Chad <laughs> ballerina's husband. I'm not, her name's Hannah, by the way. I do. I do know, know her name's Hannah. It's not like when she met him, she was like, hi <laughs> on the plane. Right. Like he got tickets or something and, I don't know. There was some situation where like he kind of like stalked her, I guess, or like came and whatever, not stalked her, but it was kind of stalkerish. A little manipulative how he went about getting to her. Um, but yeah, she didn't have like that firm stake in the ground. Like I'm doing this no matter what. And I think that is so important, but you don't, you don't get good at that 
in my experience until you're like later in your twenties, when you start really getting into your groove as a woman and like, you really start realizing what, like what you want out of your life. And I think when you build that confidence with yourself and you're, you have a strong identity at that point, like when you're younger and you don't have that, it's like, like I said, you're more malleable. Oh my God. What I'm like fucking all over the place right now. Um, those are things you wish you knew when you were younger, right? So I'm very big on this personally because I understand how quickly everything I want and dream could go away if I just went with the wind and just let someone suggest and persuade me to do whatever they want me to do for them. It's usually like a man, a woman sacrificing. It's it's a classic story. The woman sacrifices you know, her dreams and her wants and her wishes for herself and her life for a family and a husband, you know, and now she's the wife. And then it's like, she's making all these sacrifices. Meanwhile, the man continues and does his career that he was always doing, or he gets to go do that. And then she's kind of quote unquote trapped with the kids at home and the housewifey shit, you know, instead of pursuing that dream of hers. Right. So I'm so aware of this to the point where clearly (laughs) Corey knows this about me. He, we talk about this shit all the fucking time. He, that's why he's such a supporter or like he always would have been no matter what, even if I said this or not, like that he start from day one, he was like that, but he knows how important this is to me and how I'm talking about my podcast and my social media stuff. Like it, he doesn't want to get in the way of that or like do he, and I won't let him like the other thing, <laughs> the other side of the coin is like, it's going to, I will do this no matter what. I will make this happen no matter what kids, no kids. Like, of course there's going to be kids, but, um, yeah, you just, if you don't have that awareness, especially when you're young, it's going to be different. It's going to be, I think you're going to learn the lesson after the fact, after you have the eight kids and after you have the lifestyle that this man kind of threw you into. And then you wake up one day and you're like, what the fuck? I'm not a ballerina. Like I wanted to be, I never pursued that dream. Oh, I have regrets. It's like, you don't want to be in that situation. I don't think she is. People put that on her though. People are like, Oh, she's oh, like they there. There's these like dancing videos where she's like ballerina on the farmland. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, with age comes wisdom. That's the thing. And you don't have that when you're, when did she meet him? Like how old was she? (sighs) Yeah. Anyways, um, you guys want to talk about wedding planning? Speaking of getting trapped by a man. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) I'm starting to get Corey. We were eating dinner last night. I don't think that was his mom's humor actually. Um, we were sitting eating dinner last night and I, I just said a dumb, like a, just a quick, you know, joke like that. And he's like, Oh my God, you're, you just, you have my mom's humor or like that was one of my mom's like phrases or something. Like I'm I'm like, yeah, that's why we click is cause yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So we did the ballerina for, I'm trying to think if I have anything else to say about that. I don't know. I think she's doing just fine. Like to be honest, that's, that's just my perspective on it all. And, um, she's made an, an amazing career for, I think, I mean, she, yeah, her content is so great and her, what she's, she's honestly like, I feel like helping a lot of women realize that there is this pushback on the whole like boss babe thing, right? Like the whole climb the corporate ladder like you can do what a man can do bullshit narrative that we've been fucking doing since or women have been sold since I don't know I think my mom said in her time it was like it's like the 80s when that was like really picking up women putting on suits like men going to work like men trying to boss babe like (laughs) boss bro like men but Everything, there's always like a 
what do you call it? Like the pendulum always swings back to the middle eventually. So I think like what she does is not to say extreme because it's literally how we've been living for centuries, right? Like a lot of people make that point. It's true. Like this is not abnormal, but in our modern world of convenience and Amazon deliveries every fucking day for all your household items and all your packaged food products, your meal delivery services and your Instacart. And it's like people forget or like they... This is like kind of not, yeah, extreme or a little bit like, holy shit, that's a crazy way to live your life. So I think she's a great role model for a lot of women out there. I really admire what she does. I think it inspires me and uh, and it inspires me about being a mother someday or whatever. It inspires me. Um, How do I put this? Like, it makes me like it's making me look forward even more to children because I just, I think what it's so beautiful. I think the simplicity simplicity of her life is so beautiful. What she does for her kids and her family every day is so beautiful. And I think I, I, I resonate or it resonates a lot with me because nothing makes me happier. This is just my nature, I guess. Um, and I'll tell a little story in a second literally nothing makes me happier as a woman than like nurturing taking care of like feeding people like it and I know over time that is a it becomes a job and it's exhausting and it's the same shit every day and you're constantly cooking and cleaning and grocery shopping you know and you know it, it's not so romantic when it's eight kids and it's like, you're doing it pretty much on your own and you don't have any help. I don't know. Do they have nannies? Like, I don't fucking know, but I, I feel a sense of, I I feel a lot of fulfillment when I'm in that mode and when I'm doing those things. And, um, yeah. So when I watch her, I go like, Oh, you know, like this is, I don't know. It's inspiring. And, um, I'm just looking at this picture of their family. I mean, how can you hate on this? To be honest, like, how can you, uh, I I think I need to read the article. I don't know if I'm missing something here, but speaking of the whole like nurturing thing, literally God diet, sorry, Dr. Pepper, zero sugar has me (laughs) in a chokehold. Like I, I think I'm officially a diet Dr. Pepper girl over a diet coke girl i'm kind of getting sick of diet coke and by the way i am on this health kick thing for my wedding you know as i told you a million times over here on the show but i'm still consuming aspartame and i'm not giving a fuck because zero cows and it does it for me like i don't feel like i'm i don't know there's like a lot of science i think on how like in order for your body to feel any effects or like get any negative effects from aspartame you'd have to consume like 72 diet cokes an hour or some shit like the amount that's in this compared to like how much would actually affect your body is so fucking small so I don't I I think I have like one a day maybe maybe not even one a day maybe like one every two days so anyways Corey is so solid never injured Er, he had a bad back injury one time he's like always good right but the other night I noticed he was getting a little, I don't know if you'd want me to tell the story. It's like not even bad. Cause it's very normal. Like you get a little, like, mm, I'm feeling a little stressed out. Let's just say a little stress, a little, mm, you know, he's, I could see it on his face. He's like, kind of like, you know, something was up and it's like, honey, I'm just so like when I, this is my favorite thing with him. Cause it, it's very rare when he blew his back out, by the way, That was when I'm like this, I should have been a nurse. Like, again, I know that can be a crazy job, a lot of hard work and you're fucking wiping people's asses and like (laughs) cleaning up barf and you're, it's like not glamorous. Right. But it feels so fucking good to take care of people and to help people like in that way, in a nurturing nursing way. So when he blew his back out, I was, that was when I peaked as a woman, like straight up, like that's when I felt the most full ever. Like I loved taking care of him. I love like helping him to the back. Like he couldn't even walk. It was so bad. 
It was so bad. I don't know if I've, I've probably told that story that happened like six months into our relationship. I did tell that story, which it is kind of a funny story, not funny, but I don't know. Um, but anyways, he never, it's, he's always good. So like when he was like looking stressed and he, I could tell him maybe he's having a little anxiety. I'm like, I'll, I, I just go into action mode. I'm just like, all right, you're getting a foot rub. You're getting aromatherapy. You're getting a dark room with the AC on and a nice fan. Cause he likes it cool. I'm going to do a massage. I'm doing everything. You're just going to relax. And like, nothing made me feel better. I was like, I just want to take care. Like it feels so fucking good. So anyways, um, it's not like ugh, suck it up or, ugh, you know, like ugh, I have to do this right now. Like, ugh, you know, I just, all I want to do in that moment is like, literally I, I grab the Kiehl's lotion. I'm like squirting in my hands, like just going to town. He love who doesn't love a foot massage. Um, I gave him a really good foot massage and I have this aromatherapy. I do eucalyptus. Oh my God. That if you don't put eucalyptus in a spray bottle and regularly spray it around your environment, like I don't care where you're at in the grocery store, your fucking car, like in your house, I do it in my bedroom, like eucalyptus and lavender. I used to just do lavender, but now I'm adding the eucalyptus to it. And it's such a game changer. It's so, I love eucalyptus. I think it's my favorite, favorite essential oil, but guys, we all just need to breathe. We all need to breathe and chill out and relax and be good to each other. Help each other. Be nice to Ballerine Farm and her family. Like Jesus Christ, they're doing great. They're the fuck, you know? Okay. Let's talk about wedding planning. Oh shit. Turned on the voice effect. Let's see what other ones I have. Hello. Hello. Oh, that's annoying. Hi. Hi. Oh my God. This is so great. I'll stop. Sorry. New segment, wedding planning, wedding prep. So I had my first hair and makeup trial two days ago. And let's just say that. So I've never, this is crazy to say out loud. I, I don't even think I really had to think about it when they came over. I was like, I have never had my hair and makeup professionally done before. Like I've never done it for like had it for a photo shoot reason or like a, an event. I've never sat in a chair and had my makeup done unless it was by my like sister for fun. Like when we were growing up or something. So it was my first time. And let's just say that when I looked in the mirror for the first time at my potential bridal makeup, cause it was a trial, right? I literally in that moment was like, first of all, I have never looked this good in my life <laughs> ever. Number one. And number two, I suck at makeup. I am so bad at makeup. That's how good it was. That's how talented this makeup artist was. I was like, and she's been doing, it, I think for like 14 years, I had my hair done too. That looked amazing. But what I did was very simple. Like it wasn't like, Oh my God. Cause it's just like a bun, you know, but I looked in the mirror and I'm like, I didn't know I could look this good. And typically this is what I hear from a lot of brides. They don't want their makeup professionally done or they, or they're like worried about it because they have a certain way of doing their own makeup. And then when someone else does it, it doesn't look right because it's not how they do it. And I was scared. Like, that's what, that's what I thought going in. Like, ugh, cause I love doing my makeup. Like I go heavy. I love putting on for this podcast, obviously, and for different events we go to and parties and shit. So and shit. So I wasn't very picky either. Like I gave them an inspo photo and I just wanted them to do their thing. I didn't want to be like, I don't like wing. I don't like liner on this part of my eyeball. And I don't like shadow here. And I only like the blush placement here. I didn't do any of that. Um, I let them take the inspo picture and just go to town and she killed it beyond. I'm like, I, I, I didn't know the texture of my skin could be that flawless, like with makeup. I, I didn't know. I was in shock. I, I'm definitely going to go with this makeup look. I don't think we're going to change anything. She used a completely different lash strip on me. The kind of lash I always avoid because I'm like, this won't work on my eye. It worked on my eye. I need to stop doing these wispy like so the the lash strip she used on me was short to tall to short, if that makes sense. Like the middle part was the highest peak and the ends were shorter, shorter, 
which really opened up my eye and made it look bigger instead of what I always do. I think I'm wearing them today too. I always get the kind that are more cat eye, like the ends are thick and fluffy and kind of the, that's the tallest peak, not the middle part. But because I didn't, she didn't explain this to me, but what, what I noticed in the mirror is that because I have an, a high arch on my brow, I have this space to fill here. So it works like those doe eyed lash strips like work on me. So I got, I was literally studying the makeup. Like I was literally like in the mirror, they left and I'm just like, cause they came over to my house. It was great. They like sat me down in my kitchen. We had a whole setup. I brought my ring lights. I brought my cameras. I like, I got all this stuff going in case they needed any extra like equipment. They brought their own stuff, but, um, but literally I was in the mirror, just like, what shadow is this? Like what she used like Patrick Ta eyeshadow, a lot of makeup by Mario, probably some Charlotte Tilbury. I, I wasn't like paying too close attention because we were chatting the whole time about the wedding and me and Corey and they're talking about their husbands and their kids and their, it was fun. It was super fun. And, um, but I was just like the color blush they use. I've never used like everything was different than what I do. So I, again, I, I was like, I suck at makeup. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I feel like it didn't even take her that long. I think they were doing my hair and makeup for an hour tops. Like it was very, um, and I don't want to say, well, I, should I give you like the inside of my makeup look I'm going for? Um, I have the kind of, for whatever reason, I know what reason it's just like, I have the type of features that I can, I can wear a lot of makeup and it doesn't look like too much. Um, where like some people look better fresh faced with like a light, they like the clean girl makeup on me, like doesn't do it. Like it, I, I always just look sick no not sick but like the clean girl makeup just kind of I don't know what does it do it just kind of looks eh. but then I start adding you know a nice smoky shadow you know bolder eye the I if I don't make my eyes look bold like the makeup looks like like it's missing something so I will say that I'm definitely not doing clean girl bridal makeup um but yeah, they came over. So my hair, I think we're going to switch up. We're going to try something different for the next trial um, to compare the makeup. We're doing the same because God damn, I was like, I think this highlighter she used was like basically like I didn't know. I, I think I do. Like I did my makeup today. I don't know if you can see on camera. Did I do any of my plugs, by the way? Oh, my God. I literally didn't say anything, but Please hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening right now. I'm not, I'm not even going to do it. Just go to YouTube to subscribe to watch this. Um, go to YouTube and subscribe so you can see my makeup on camera. I'm also on Spotify video. So when you click the Spotify um, like link to the podcast, the video of the podcast will also pop up. So hi, Spotify. Hi, YouTube. Here's my makeup. Um, I contour, right? I do my blush and my contour so like my cheeks pop. The way she did it made my cheeks look three dimensional. Like it looked like my cheek was like lifting off of my face. I didn't know. I, I don't even know what she did. I kind of think it was a, um, a technique where you kind of carve out with powder after, which I've seen. And I've done that before kind of like carve around the cheekbone, but it just looks so good. It looks so good. And she kept going back in with little brushes. Like I can, t I can tell she like, was fixing little details here and there. And then she contoured my nose, which I never do, which I need to learn how to do because I didn't know my nose was, could ever look that tiny <laughs> and cute. Um, cause typically like nose contour, I don't like to do it cause I feel like it's super noticeable in person. Like you can see the brown lines and it looks like muddy on me. So yeah, makeup trial check, makeup and hair trial check. Alterations are happening in two weeks on my wedding dress. And the other update, and this is the major update, is that I have been online shopping for two weeks straight. I think it's officially been two weeks. Like I have Jeff Bezos money. Like look, I am, I have never spent this much. I, so let me explain. <laughs> I don't have any outfits. Like I said last week and the week before and the week before I've been, I, I just assume that like, oh, I'll walk into Nordstrom or Neiman Marcus or whatever. I'll just like go to the mall and like find a cute little white dress for my wedding weekend for like the Friday night dinner thing we're doing. 
and the rehearsal thing and then the Sunday brunch. Like I just figured it'd be easy. I'll just like go into a store and or just like go online and find a dress, find an outfit, you know, no big deal. No. Okay. First of all, it started out online. This is how the journey of my bridal looks started. Started out online. Very, you know, casual. I'm just browsing. I think I started with like some Pinterest inspo and then I go over to the links from the Pinterest and now I'm on, you know, Bloomingdale's or Nadine Marabi or whatever these bridal, like I'm on these random, um, revolve. Oh my God. I'm going to go through a bridal X or wedding X, by the way. I do have a TikTok I'm going to play and then I'll talk about my own X. Forgot about that segment, but we will do that one. So I'm on the websites and I'm making accounts so I can save things and blah, 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 blah. So this is like the start of me. And this is a couple weeks ago, the start or maybe even longer than that. Let's say like three weeks ago, I started this process, but it got to the point where I was like, everything is starting to look the same. Everything is white, right? Like all of the looks I'm looking at, all the dresses are white. Everything's white. And I wasn't buying anything. I was just like, I didn't know what to pick. I was like, I just like, everything looks good and like whatever. So then I was like, okay, last weekend, I'm like, I'm going to go to the mall. I'm going to go to the mall because I feel like I'll have better luck and I'll actually buy something if I'm in person at the mall, like with the item, like trying it on. And I'll have like a little soiree, a little, you know, fun shopping day with myself. Maybe I'll get a Starbucks on the way, you know, that type of shit. <laughs> Maybe a little salad at Tender Greens halfway through the shopping day, you know, one of, you know, so I go to the mall, I'm in Nordstrom, I'm in Nima Marcus, I'm in Saks, I'm in Blooming, you know, I'm walking around and I'm like, I just walk in and I'm like, where's the white, where's the white, I'm, in, I'm looking for like the dresses, the white stuff, white, 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 I'm just going to, again, with the indecision, like wasn't, nothing was really calling my name, nothing was like, wow, I need this, left, said F this, I'm online shopping again, all right. In that moment, I said, I think this was last Monday. Yeah, it was last Monday when this process officially started. I said, bitch, your wedding's in like 50 days, 50 some days. Start buying. Start pressing. Start checking out those checking out those carts. Get on those websites. Start checking out. Get things sent to the house. You can always return. You can always return. I'm telling myself this because I'm, I'm conscientious. You know, I don't want to be like a jackass with my money. So, and these things are not cheap, okay? Um dresses, like bridal looks, like this stuff adds up. I mean, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to do it right. So I want to have things that look great. And then I I'm excited about wearing, not something that's like, Oh, and this was on major clearance or like, I got a good deal at TJ Maxx on this. Like I want to, this is like the time in my life where I'm like, I want to get what I want and I want it. I want to look good. And it's for the photos and the memories and the experience of it all. So Starting last Monday, I was like, again, with the, the J- Jeff Bezos, I was just buying, buying, buying. I think I ordered, I ordered 10 heels. I think I'm at 10 now, 10 heels and about 10 to 15 dresses, <laughs> um, bridal slips, like robes, things for the getting ready morning, um, accessories, jewelry. Like I'm like, I still, I still need a little, a cute, maybe a little clutch or something. And I still don't want my veil though, which I already know which veil I want. I just have to pick it up at the, um, where I got my wedding dress. So that's easy. But anyways, I'm sitting next to a mound of boxes and I'm like, you know, it feels good. Like it feels so good to treat yourself and to just be in this moment of like, I need outfits, I need options. And I know myself. And when I go into a department store and I try on a bunch of clothes, Sometimes it's like, I'll try, I, I'm always the person in the, in the store with 50 items of clothes to, uh, picked out like over my arm, ready to try on in the dressing room. And I'm having to go back to the lady 10 times. Cause you can only have eight items at a time. Cause this is like TJ Maxx and they don't like have like unlimited, you know, I'm one of those kinds of shoppers. And then a lot of the times I'll try a ton of stuff on and nothing works. So I know myself and with these dresses, like I need to see myself in a variety and I need options. So I don't, have a freak out two weeks before the wedding and I have nothing to wear. So it's been really fun. If you want to see what I picked out so far, it's on my TikTok. I did a, uh, I didn't do a try on. I'm going to save putting on the dresses and showing anyone for the wedding weekend. Like I don't want anyone to see me in like the full effect yet. Cause I do want to kind of keep that a surprise. So 
but I made a video of like a little haul of what I got so far. And, um, so far my favorite brand that I discovered or designer or whatever is self portrait. I got this beautiful, like self portrait. Um, it's like a mesh rhinestone gown with a bodice. It's like maxi length. Um, yeah, self portrait. And then I'm having a lot of luck on this website called myteresa.com. My Teresa. Um, I got a Nadine Murabi sequiny, not sequiny, but like embellished dress, some tool chiffoni dresses. Um, all my heels, I think I'm going like full Bagley Mishka. Bad goodly. I can't ever say it. It's like B A D G L E Y. Bagley Mishka heels. So I got my bridal heels um, from there. I'm not doing like Jimmy Choo or like fucking Chanel. I don't, I'm not going to go spend that much for my, I, I know it's like, you know, that's like the best option for your, to, as a bride, what, what's like the best heel you could buy. It's probably a, a Jimmy Choo bridal heel. Okay. We all know this, but you can get the same thing basically for like a third the price with a uh, Bagley Mishka and they look literally. So the quality is the same, like straight up. It's you're just not, you're not getting the Jimmy Choo logo. There's like corners I'm willing to cut and corners I'm not willing to cut. And I'm definitely like with the bridal heels and honestly the dress is like, yeah, they're not cheap. Oh my God. I'm like, this is how much this is, <laughs> you know? Like dresses are not a hundred dollars. Uh, they can be, uh, you know, they can be a hundred dollars, but like, I feel like a good dress is around like a really good one. Good quality. You're like wearing a beautiful piece of, of, of clothing or whatever. Like I'm finding the range is more around the 400 to 900, sometimes a thousand dollars not a thousand dollars, maybe like 400 to like the sweet sweet spot for me so far has been like 400 to $700, which sounds insane. It's like for a little bridal dress, but yeah, it's the quality is insane. I, I, I've been really enjoying opening these, opening these really pretty boxes and like, cause I don't do this all the time. Like I'm, I'm an Amazon athleisure bitch. Like I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm a TJ Maxx queen. I, I I go to the Goodwill and I love thrift shopping. I like vintage clothes. I like, you know, um, but th so this has been really fun to like treat myself and get the higher end stuff that I never buy. And, um, okay. I'm going to play this. So wait, what other updates do I have? Alterations is in two weeks. Um, I have, yeah, let me, oh, I did go viral on TikTok again. Guys, it's insane. Like literally I am proof. If you're like, if you need proof or if you need a sign from the universe to quit your job, I know it's like not ideal or it's not, it's a risk. Clearly it's a risk, but I am proof. I can confidently say this now. I was fired on May 1st, May, June, three months since I've been fired in the three months since I got fired from my job and went full time with my podcast and my social media, I have made exponentially more money in three months from that than I did in the last almost four years since I started this show. So again, if you need a sign, I'm living proof. <laughs> Let me be the example for you or the the person who did it because I, this is, this is the, this is proof that, or I am proof that, or no, like this is what happens when you bet on yourself and you believe that you can do it and you just go for it. And you, you, you don't look back, you know, it's one of those things where you hear the stories all the time, the hero's journey of, Oh, I eventually I it went from my corporate job to my passion project and I, fully quit the corporate world. And now I'm doing my dream. It's like, you hear those stories all the time. And I feel like I'm in that transition right now. And it's actually fucking working. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not shocked. Cause I knew like, again, I, I, I am so I'm my biggest cheerleader cheerleader. I know I, I always knew I could do it. I always knew that this would happen. This day would happen, but, um, it's just insane how 
the timing of it all works where it was a little scary at first, you know, I got fired from my job and it's like, what's going to happen next? Like I, and then here we are three months later, looking back, like, what the hell did I just do for the last four years? I could have been doing this the whole time and making a shit ton of money. So just saying, um, you do have to have the sauce. I think you do have to have the like drive that like, um, moxie that thing, you know, with social media, with like podcast, you can't just like start. I feel like it helps that I didn't start from zero. Obviously I was already ahead of most people that just want to like quit their job and start something fresh. Um, but yeah, anyways, I went viral as you know, for putting frozen chicken in my crock pot. Okay. That's how it all started. And then now I went viral for telling everyone in the world that I think a man should pick out the woman's engagement ring. Okay. That pissed a lot of people off. It raised a lot of eyebrows. It got a lot. It created a lot of drama on my TikTok. I think we're sitting at two and a half million likes views. I don't, I think views. So yeah, it's crazy how like now I'm talking about engagement rings on my TikTok and the thing is, the thing that I'm learning though about social media is that even, even if it's not the most likable take, (laughs) even if it's not the most like, um, you know, it's good content. Okay. Like it makes for good content. And and now that I'm on the other side where I'm seeing the engagement, I'm seeing the growth of my accounts. I'm seeing this like money come in from social media. I'm like, I understand why people do what they do because it's this game of keeping the algorithm or, or making, keeping the algorithm on your side or like, like befriend, making the algorithm your, your bitch, like, or, or getting on its good side. Like there is something to it where it's entertainment at the end of the day and it's content. And so by me saying that, like it wasn't, I didn't, none of this was like a plan by the way. Like I always, I always wanted to just post my podcast clips and go viral that way. But like for, I've been, you know, doing this for so long, like it's not working. Um, I do have podcast accounts like strictly for podcast clips, but it seems like the format of me just being me talking to the camera, making TikToks in my house, uh, works better than me being a talking head with a microphone and headphones, um, on people's for you page. So yeah, it's been a, a really fun, like crazy thing. And I actually really enjoy making TikToks. I think it's like a fun, it's like fun. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just like, they're fun. It's a fun thing to do. And I, um, yeah, I kind of do. I, I feel like I bring over similar topics to my TikTok that I talk about here, obviously, like I'm just doing it in a different format. So that's why I think it works. Cause like, if this works, if what I do here works, if these conversations, conversations and these topics work here, they should in theory work on my TikTok. I think just the presentation of it is what, uh, needs to be different in my case. And I think it's just maybe how I, a lot of, I feel like a lot of the, the secret to content creation or like the, the, um, the magic or the, is like this tone of voice, the way the person looks, the content of what they're saying, like the topic, whatever they're talking about. And like the speed at which they talk, just their mannerisms, the background, like all of those things, like have to come together or, And I think it's if if you're like trying to figure out TikTok right now, it's like try different formats, try different, like do like a voiceover, do a selfie video of you versus a sitting your phone down video, you know, like switch it up and play around with it. Because I think in my case, that's what I learned because none of my also, oh my God, another tip. This is such a no brainer because like this is TikTok 101. But I think the reason why my podcast clips didn't take off like my normal TikToks do is because I wasn't creating them in the app. I was uploading videos from my iPhone to my TikTok and just posting them from there instead of, I think that the algorithm or TikTok likes when you create, you film, you edit and you post within the app. So yeah, I'm a TikToker and 
I went viral and I pissed people off, but I also like won a lot of people over. So it's interesting. It's like, and that's, that's what I know. And that's what I've always known about social media. Like you're not going to please everyone. And this, if you don't even try, like it's, um, so yeah, let's talk about what was I going to say? Oh, wedding planning. Oh, my bridal or my wedding X or whatever. Um, this is a good TikTok. It's, um, let me pull it up here. It just, it's a good start to the conversation. I'll play it. I want to know what trends that you like, what gives you the wedding ick? What do you <laughs> see happening at weddings that you're like, oh. oh my God, if I see a flash mob one more time, I'm going to die. Uh, I've just seen a few pictures of it recently and I don't know. I just don't get it. Mm -hmm. It's the cake table that is all of this fabric, like mounted oh, up. Oh, I, I know, know what you're about. talking and about. And then yeah. it's like, bows and flowers and it so i believe that things have been minimalism and now yeah. they're hitting pendulum nuts. swinging over to maximalism and, for sure but i do not get that cake table at yeah. all it looks like a load of laundry to me with a cake on trying. top i don't it's get so it at true. all i want to know okay so let's talk about it like what are my wedding icks or what do i not like so obviously every bride is different everyone has a different preference and a different vision for their wedding and honestly like it's not necessarily an ick, but like I would never do a boho like I'm in tall grass in a airy fairy dress with my with my hair like half up, half down. I honestly don't like the half up, half down hair. I think it looks great on a lot of people. I just don't like it for bridal looks. I don't know. Just what I like. I'm talking like the super like waterfall curly hair. Um, there's like a specific dress I'm thinking of too. It's just, it's been done a lot. I don't know. It's just not my look, the thing I'm trying to do for my wedding. But, um, again, everyone's different. So if I'm learning anything from my viral TikTok about the engagement ring, uh, situation or the thing I said about the man picking out the ring, what I'm learning is that at the end of the day, like everyone is different. Everyone has a different backstory, a, a different, um, a lot of it's traditional, like with, or it's cultural, right? So people have different traditions in their culture. So, um, I'm only, I can only speak from like, um, yeah, my own life experience and what I've seen at honestly, like American weddings. Like I can't, I'm trying to think if I've been to any other, yeah, like other countries or I've seen other, I've seen weddings from other countries that are beautiful. Like what they do in India is like with the henna and the, the bangles and oh my God, it's insane. It's gorgeous. It's so, so it's so lavish and colorful and over the top compared to like American weddings. So again, it's all a personal preference thing. There isn't a right and a wrong, but an ick I have for weddings or one of the biggest icks I have right now, um, in terms of like weddings or in my case, so this video is more about the decor of the wedding uh, it was the cake table looking like a pile of laundry, right? So my ick, my ick doesn't have to do with the wedding decor and the the vision and the or like the vibe of the wedding. It has to do with the bridal looks. So I kind of I kind of have an ick for the bridal looks, and again, it's personal preference. Everyone has a different, you know, vision for themselves as a bride. But something that I'm noticing, and it's just the way it is because of our online shopping world we all live in. Like, I feel like it's a slippery slope where bridal looks are starting to look like you just walked out of boohoo.com and you're, I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like half, like it's giving like clubbing, but like, like, but in a white dress or like club 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 girl but in a white dress like still wearing platform white heels and like I don't know how to explain it it's like very cheap looking it's very um Instagram baddie looking for your wedding day it's not very it's it's just it looks kind of not trashy I don't I never want to call like a bride trashy like they're doing their best they want to look they obviously look beautiful and sexy and pretty whatever all the things right but the vibe of it is very Instagram girl. Like it's very like Instagram baddie ish. Um, versus I feel like there's two types of brides. There's like that, the super trendy modern bride who's 
like sexy bride. It's like sexy, but like obviously classy because it's bridal. But it looks very um, right out of Pinterest. I feel like a lot of the Pinterest that that's why I don't have a Pinterest board because like honestly, most of the stuff I see on my Pinterest is too trendy looking. It's too like on the it's like on the nose or whatever. It's like too obvious. Everything about these bridal looks I've seen on Pinterest are so obvious, and I don't want to be obvious. Something about me is that I have this individualism, individual individuality uh, complex or whatever, where I need to be, uh, different than other people. And I hate on anything that's trendy and popular. And I have to question, like, I just like can't hang. Cause I'm like, I don't want to be like everyone else. I want to be different. And I'm at heart a basic bitch. So like, how does that work? I don't know. But for my wedding, I obviously want to do something. So the other type of bride I think is the more traditional, timeless, classic Audrey Hepburn. Um, you know, in my case, like Jacqueline Kennedy, because I was named after Jacqueline Kennedy, like that kind of bride who's like, it's pure class through and through. I, I kind of feel like Olivia Culpo is like what she was going for with like her full coverage bridal gown was kind of an, it was alluding to that. Her other looks, not so much, but like, I don't know. It's just giving class. Like it's, it's giving like timeless, like this will last the test these photos the way you look will last the test of time it'll never be like oh she was doing something trendy there's those types of brides and that's something that I am striving for for my wedding right and so it's been this challenge because a lot of these websites not I'm not going to name names revolve are enticing and retrofetti retrofette retrofette they're enticing because like these gowns are hot sexy beautiful wonderful they're obviously going to look great but I'm like this feels too trendy or something and so anyways, my ick is like looking like an Instagram baddie on your wedding day. And, and it's not like there's no timelessness to it. It's just like super. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm team like I think it's hard to think. Here's the deal, though, with these online shopping sites and these Instagram sponsored ads you get as a bride and these pages you follow like it's hard to think differently. It's hard to think outside of the box and like, what's the less obvious choice? What's the less obvious, um, dress or bridal slip or heel or shoe or jewelry or this and that. Like, um, for example, I'm struggling with the earrings right now because I I'm actually not, I know what I want to do, but they're like impossible to find the earrings I want to wear on my wedding day are like the style of it is like, they don't sell it because it's that like, they're that different than the norm or like what is easy to find if you search like bridal earrings you know that's what I'm that's what I'm noticing if you search for like the thing instead of searching for like here's like one of my searches for example for one of the white looks I was trying to find I searched instead of like white bridal dress or like a uh, little white dress for a bride or there's like search terms that are ho common like um I don't know like rehearsal dinner dress right I'm searching like the neckline, the fabric, the, um, what else? Like the, I'll, I'll search like ruched tool, ruched tool, corset, midi dress with a decollete. I don't know. Like, honestly, like these are shit show terms to put into Google. Cause like you get, it's they're it's too specific, but my point is like, thinking outside of the box, trying to do something that is going to be more classic and timeless over just like whatever you see on boohoo.com. I honestly saw actually something I really liked was from Lulu's or something. Was it called lulu's.com? Um, I'm just talking about like those super white platform heels that are like, yeah, again, like what you'd wear to a night clubbing. It's like, it's like, bitch, do a kitten heel or something. Like, I don't know, switch it up. Do something that's like classy. Another thing I don't, I, my other ick, this is kind of a bridal look ick, is tennis shoes. Could never be me. And uh, block heels. Could never be me. Like, I think it's obviously comfortable, but I don't want to be comfortable on my wedding. I obviously want to be comfortable. I care more about the way it looks than the comfort and I can wear like I've 
I can wear heels. Like I have no issue. Like if you don't wear heels a lot or if heels are always a thing for you and you can't walk in them and you're like struggling and they're painful. Like I understand get something super comfy. But for me, I'm like, I want to have a pointy heel with my wedding dress. Like I don't want to have a big chunky, like wedged chunk block situation. So I'm trying to think what other icks I have. Like I mentioned like the hair, the boho things, not for me. Um, also, oof, this is going to be specific or, hmm, I don't like these deep V dresses that have a, this is my personal preference. Again, they're like super deep V and they have this like mesh thing that like covers the, where the cleavage is. It's like trying to cover it, but it still shows. And then usually a lot of the brides that wear these like don't have any chest. So it's like really flat and it just kind of, it looks like they always, okay. This is my thing. My ick with strapless bridal dresses, my ick with strapless bridal dresses is if you're from the itty bitty titty committee, if you don't have tatas, okay. Make sure your dress is hiked up where if you had boobs, like it would fill out and it would be, cause like a lot of the times it looks weird. Cause like, I'm thinking of a specific dress I've seen on someone who I really like and I follow and I think they're wedding was gorgeous and they're gorgeous and everything. But I was just like, pull it up. Like it was like halfway down their chest cause they don't have any boobs. And it just looks like the proportions are off. So with strapless bridal gowns, like pull that shit up, like get some glue, get some tape. I don't know what you got to do, but like, um, especially if it has a deep V cause then the deep V literally looks like it's going to your belly button. <laughs> so I know that's really specific, but there's like a lot of other things I probably could come up with. Um, we're probably good on time here though. This, this was a long episode. Let's see what we talked about. We talked about the, the Olympics. We talked about Steven. We talked about we're in seventh place in the medal count, but we have the most medals. So seventh place in the gold medal count currently as the, in the United States. Um, we talked about the ballerina farm article, little Trump, little football season excitement. Um, Wedding planning, where I'm at with that, alterations, outfits, shoes, makeup. Um, I went golfing. I didn't talk about that. But I'm, I'm officially at the place with my golf game where I can hang. Like, it's not – I'm not – I am still a mess sometimes. Like, I am still hitting it out of bounds, and I'm still, like, you know, fucking up my shots here and there. But it's not where I can't even hang and, like, play and, you know – so it's, I had a good time we went on Sunday and played nine holes, um, with our friends and they brought their golden retriever with them, which was really fun. So golf games going well, I'm getting new clubs. I, I think I mentioned that I got fitted a couple weeks ago doing all ping clubs, all ping irons, excuse me, ping clubs, irons. It's all the same shit. It's all the, I don't, I'm still learning. Okay. Hi. I'm three, two years in a golf. I'm still learning. Um, yeah, I'm doing irons or I'm doing all ping woods and irons all ping. Um, I debated the driver because the ping driver that I tried out has these like shark fin things on the top. I don't know if it's like to cut the wind or whatever, but I didn't love the the look of it when I, uh, like when I looked down at the shaft, like I, I didn't love the look of it, but I hit that one. Like, I don't know. I want to say, I hit that one 220, but I want to say the one, the Callaway one I tried, the Paradigm, I think I hit the ball speed or ball spin was different. I don't know all the terms. It was like the Callaway one I hit like 216. So the fact I hit the ping one further was like, okay, then, then do the ping, but also something with let's, the spin was better. So I'm doing ping. Trying to think what else. Um, I think that's the podcast. So thank you so much for hanging out, for being with me today on this gorgeous 31st of July, 2024. It is now 1.07 p.m. I got to take the dogs out. I got to edit this. I got to make a TikTok. I got to respond to my comments. I got to, I don't know if you guys noticed this was super random, not at all what I was just talking about, but I got a new podcast chair. So um, that's also fun. I'm like updating my studio here a little bit with new stuff. Um, yeah, I have to, what else do I have to do today? Probably not going to make it to yoga cause I'm going to be editing, but 
that's it. Um, please hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening right now. I'm on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Breaker, Overcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Please hit that subscribe button and leave me a five-star review while you're there. Please, you leave a five-star review. It helps me. It helps people find out about the show. And subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Jacqueline Monroe Show. Follow me on TikTok at Jacqueline Monroe. Instagram at Jacqueline Monroe. That's it. Thanks for being here, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.